Hello and welcome to this new video. We're going to create a bird's eye effect using one point perspective looking down on this imaginary city. To begin with, I'd like you to come down to the lower left hand corner or drag your mouse down to the lower left hand corner and left click on the start menu again in XP it'll say start and in Windows XP or Windows 7 it'll just be this little icon so left click on the start menu and hover over all programs and that will actually eventually turn this into a menu box and you can take a look at the accessories folder scroll to the accessories folder left click and in there you'll find the paint program and that's what we're going to open up is the paint program now it may be located in other places there may be shortcut icons that you can use but again that's if you can't seem to find it it's usually hiding in that accessories folder alright so our paint application is open you can see it's an untitled paint and basically it's open in the corner here now again I discussed since you're watching this on a video player there's a couple ways to do this you can simply custom design the screen and I would recommend bringing it out to the majority of your screen perhaps three quarters of the screen area um, or you can actually maximize it and then do your navigation at the bottom of the of the scroll bar or at the bottom bar here you can just navigate between the two different applications alright so I'm gonna actually have this maximized so that you can see this best now we're going to take this small corner and adjust the canvas size so we have a pretty large canvas and we're gonna make it not too big we don't want to make a huge design here you can actually take this effect and make it much larger but I'm going to make it basically a rectangle um, I would say just make sure that it's taking up most of your screen I'm not going to give you any specific numbers perhaps your instructor will give you specific numbers if your instructor wants the image size a certain way you simply go up here to where it says image and left click on image scroll down to attributes and you can actually specify the width and height of the file but again I'm not going to do that I just simply want a basic rectangle and what we're going to be exploring in this design is how to use that one point perspective technique that we've already discussed how to use that to create a bird's eye view as if we're flying over the city as I showed you in the beginning of the video now to start with I'd like you to take the rectangle tool and left click on the rectangle tool and we're going to select this first option now if you'll notice the first option looks like this it's just simply an outline and this is the stroke selection so we're going to take that stroke tool and we're going to pick for this instance we're going to pick the first line thickness and what we'll end up doing is using that first line thickness to draw our design most of the design anyway and then anything we want to thicken up we can actually take and retrace later with a thicker line thickness that's generally how we'll proceed through these videos um, the thin line just makes it easier to erase and we'll be doing some erasing as, as well alright so again with the rectangle shape tool selected select the stroke only and first line thickness and we're gonna start from around this little blue air this little blue not arrow but this little blue dot here and we're going to drag this all the way across the screen to the other blue dot over here and again these points these little blue dots are helpful reference points to tell us where the center of our canvas is from top to bottom so we're gonna use those quite a bit let's go ahead and take go somewhat close to this blue dot we're just gonna go above it and I'm gonna left click and I'm gonna drag all the way across and off the right side of the page here and I don't want this too thick somewhat just just above and just below that little blue point now we're going to do the same from top to bottom if you notice there's a little blue dot here and another little blue dot at the bottom we're going to take that those two points and using the rectangle tool with with 
the um, using the rectangle tool with the stroke selected we're going to draw a rectangle now this is going to give us what eventually will look like a crossroads all right now right here in the middle that's where you're right if you guessed it that's where we're going to put our vanishing point so to do that I'm just going to take my little airbrush here go to the smallest point and make sure I have left clicked we're gonna left click on black we're gonna right click on white to make sure those are our default colors so again left click on black right click on white so you have black in the foreground white in the background and with our airbrush tool selected the smallest size we're gonna put that right in the center now you'll notice the tip of that little spray is where it actually goes and so I hold that down to give myself a nice little round dot that's going to be our vanishing point all right so that we could take and select now our rectangle tool we're gonna to go back to the rectangle all right and there's a little change here because in this video this area above this what was in our last video this was the horizon line and this was above the horizon this was below the horizon line well in this instance for this video this is actually going to be the ground and these are going to be two streets crossing one another and we're going to draw a series of buildings like I showed you for this what we're going to do is come over here and select the rectangle tool rectangle shape tool and for those of you using XP you're gonna to have to actually select the line tool so that we can change our line thickness we're gonna actually give it a line thickness of three to to create the illusion that these tops of the buildings that we're going to create right now are closer to us we're gonna use a thicker line so we'll use a third line thickness then you'll have to go to the rectangle tool and select this stroke only selection all right now having done that we're going to move on to the screen and starting somewhere over here about a quarter of the way or just below perhaps just below halfway we're going to start somewhere over here and draw the top of our first building and this you can actually play around with this make a couple different sized buildings different shapes etc something like that and I'll show you the effect how it works and then we'll actually add some to the other sections alright so at this point we're gonna take our line thickness and change it to a one go back and we're going to actually use the line tool and we're going to connect from this vanishing point to each corner now I'm not holding the shift key I'm simply connecting to each corner here so again from our vanishing point to each of my corners and at this point I'm not too worried about the overlapping because we're going to do some cleaning up and erasing eventually so I'll go ahead and connect to all my corners just like so uh oh now notice here I just noticed that this line this point here does not connect to my vanishing point and since that's two moves back I'm gonna hit control Z once which undoes my last line and control Z again which undoes that previous line that I that I recognized only after I drew my next line so be careful to keep your eyes on that always looking for mistakes critically evaluating your own work so right now we're starting to get this sort of confusion in here but we're gonna sort that out when we change line thicknesses later and when we do some erasing so again right now I'm just simply putting in my single lines all right a 
All right. So that's a good start. Now, at this point, it looks like these squares are sort of jetting out from this vanishing point. All right, but a lot of transparency is happening here. So we're going to fix that transparency, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, the first thing I'm going to want to do is erase some of this obvious overlap that I don't want because if we're going to make these look like buildings they're going to need to be opaque not transparent like this however if you if you find some kind of design that this transparency would look good on that's great but for this design what I'm gonna want you to do is make sure all the lines are erased so that it looks sharp and it looks like these are buildings rather than lines jetting through the building. So what we're going to do is take our eraser tool and perhaps it'll be helpful to zoom in at this point. So click on the magnifying tool and we're going to zoom right in, right in on this and then go select your eraser tool and you can pick the size that you're comfortable with. These are the adjustment sizes over here and for this I'm just going to actually I'm going to leave that and I'm going to erase these lines in here. Now if you do make a mistake, and I, I'm sure I'll make a mistake here and there, so I'll, I'll show you what to do if you make a mistake and you need to erase it, you'll hit the uh, Control Z, hold the Control key down, and hit Z. Now let's see, these look pretty good. I don't need this one. You have to th kind of think about what lines you need and which ones you don't. Any lines that would go in back of a shape need to be erased like these. So once we've done that it starts to look more like buildings. Not exactly. Like this line we don't need. And it's a little bit large so I'm going to hold off on that. This line we don't need. Only the lines going to each corner of each building do we need. Now you could actually leave those for windows but I'm gonna take those out to make this a little more opaque. Alright, so that looks pretty good. Okay. So at this point we're going to zoom back out by adjusting this down to the middle and we're going to select the line tool and we're going to go with the second line thickness here and what we're going to do is basically draw where our sidewalk would be and that's going to help us cut off anything we don't need so actually I'm going to just start drawing right about the width I would want my sidewalk and I'm going to hold the shift key down hold the shift key to constrain that line when I get to about here I'm going to let go with my mouse hold again and draw it again holding the shift key now again inside here this is going to represent our sidewalk so I'm going to need to do some zooming in here so I'm going to take my zoom tool bring it onto the page and we're going to zoom right in right into this area here and perhaps we'll zoom in one more time because all these lines right through here where our sidewalk is going to be we're going to need to get rid of those so I'm going to actually zoom in one more time and then go up and select my eraser tool and I'll probably need a smaller eraser yeah it's going to look like I'm going to need a smaller one because in fact what I'm going to do is get rid of much of this Now, if you, again, I just made a mistake there and erased some things I didn't want to erase, but I'm going to fix that in just a moment. There's another mistake. This is when you're dealing at a level of magnification this small or this magnified, it's, it's a little bit more difficult. All right, so I'm going to actually, I'm just going to, oops. I hit right click and it undid all that. All right, get rid of this. And then I can do is redraw my lines. All right. So I've erased, and I've really, like I said, I erased a little bit more than I wanted to. So I'm going to come back and still in magnification mode, still have my second line thickness selected. I'm going to put my cursor right in the middle of this line, 
Hold the shift key. Oops, that must have been a one line thickness. So hit control Z, change that to a single line thickness there. Hold the shift key, drag it across. Okay, same thing here. I'm going to hold the shift key and drag right up. Then let go with your left mouse button. Then let go with the shift key as I told you earlier in the other video. Then we're going to take our second line thickness and redraw our sidewalk here by holding the shift key. This does take a little bit of practice. And again, holding the shift key, we're going to redraw that second line. All right. And I see a little bit of erasing that I'd like to do. And so I'm going to actually come back, select that first, that first level eraser. I'm going to actually take that out. Okay, so that looks pretty good, I think, at this point. So let's go ahead and zoom back out by bringing this panel down just a little bit to 100%. And then we're going to actually clean this up by adding that second line thickness to our buildings. So I'm going to actually take this corner and redraw these lines down to the sidewalk. So I'm actually going to freehand them. Now that those lines, I know where they're supposed to be, I can actually redraw right over the top of those lines. So again, the process is basically creating your guidelines with that single line thickness, then coming back, erasing, and then adding the other lines. I'm actually going to make that one disappear right behind. And actually this one... There's a little trick right here. We don't need to draw this one yet. I'll show you why in just a moment. We're going to bring these down, these closer lines, right down to our sidewalk. Oops, control Z. I didn't like that one. All right, there we go. And one more. Okay, good. And actually, I'm going to draw this one from this corner there, this corner, right there, actually it's a little bit off. All right, and again you could play around with different line thicknesses. Perhaps a third line thickness would have worked better on this, but again you could play around with those. Now look what happens here. If we follow this building down it just seems to disappear. So what do we need? We need to actually a parallel line, a line that is parallel to this front or closer edge of the plane. So we need to start here, hold the shift key, and then we're gonna left click until we hit the next building. We don't want to go into the next building but until we hit it. And you can see that that adds to that effect of three-dimensional. And I'm going to then left click again and simply drag up to this corner to thicken that line. And there it is. It looks like a real cube moving all the way down. All right, this one looks pretty good. And this one here is missing an end. So what we need to do is figure out where that end should be. Left click, hold the shift key. And the reason, again, we're holding the shift key is because we want this line, the line that we draw at the base of the building, to be parallel to the line that we draw at the top of the building. And to do that, we need to hold the shift key to constrain it to the right angles. All right, so pretty much that's how we're going to proceed through the drawing. So I'm going to walk you through that. I'm going to stop talking um, as much but I am going to walk you through that. And um, feel free to create your own buildings. And yours don't have to be exactly like mine, unless your instructor wants them exactly like mine, and then you'll need to do what your instructor says. So third line thickness. I'm going to create a bigger building over here. Nice big topped building. 
And I'm going to create kind of a shorter version of here. I'm going to make that one seem, I'm going to make this one seem a little bit shorter. Let's play around with this a little bit. So I'm going to take my first line thickness again using my vanishing point. I'm going to connect to all my corners. Oops, control Z, I don't like that line. Right there in the corner. There it is. Again, so this is the first step is connecting all your corners for one point perspective, connecting all your corners to the vanishing point. And again, since this is an opaque type of design, I don't or building, I don't want to draw that other line over here. If I wanted this to look transparent, then yes, I would actually draw a line through here. It would actually look more like a box. And there's some things we could play around with in that regard as well, I suppose. But for now, we're not going to do that. All right, so I've drawn those lines. Now what I'm going to do here, go back to my third line thickness. Well, give me a second line thickness. And I'm going to start here, hold the shift key. Draw it down, hold the shift key, connect it. And starting from that point, bring it up. Good corner to corner. So I'm thickening up the edges of my boxes here by adding a second line thickness. And then I'm going to get rid of these guidelines. And again, to do that, we need to zoom in, grab the eraser tool, and select the eraser you're most comfortable with. I'm going to need this bigger one. I could squeeze right between the buildings here. One click does it. And again, this gives you really good control of your mouse doing this. You learn to really control your mouse well. And so when I'm trying to get into those tight corners, what I will do is really just place that mouse and wait until I've got it perfect, then click it one time, and that does it. Up, I erase some of that road. So if I erase some of the road, go back, grab the line thickness. It looks like a single line thickness. Again, hold that shift key. And just sort of repair that. Or we could have done it a second way. We could have clicked undo to undo that last move and try it again. So there's a few ways to fix your mistakes in this. All right, now this since this building looks much shorter, we're going to need to put a road going to it. So I'm going to grab that rectangle tool. First of all, those of you using XP will need to make sure you have the single line thickness selected. Then go to the rectangle tool and make sure you have this stroke only selected. And we're going to begin our rectangle from the front of the building here. We can make that as long or as wide as we want. Something like this. All right. And then, actually, we can work at this zoomed level quite a bit. So we'll put this to the corner, to the corner, again from the vanishing point to the corner, and then simply change your line thickness to 2, and you can draw the thickness of your sidewalk by holding the shift key. And I'll have to continue that one later. Come down parallel to that other one. Hold the shift key. Left click and drag. And then we can erase this area right in here. And we may need to zoom in again because it looks a little bit small. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Come up here, grab my eraser tool. And that one's a little big. 
So I'm going to take the next size down. And again, left click, position to where you like the eraser to be, especially at this magnification level. And simply left click. And again, feel free to pause this video if you need to, if you're having trouble. I've been doing this for quite a bit of time, so if you're having trouble with it, um, that's to be expected. Simply pause the video. That's the beauty of this type of learning. You can pause the video, or this type of instruction, I should say. You can always pause that video. And we'll view it again. And at this point, I'm going to take the middle of my road out so it looks more like a cross section rather than two different lines here. There we go. So I'm going to need to fix that with my line tool. Again, grab my first line thickness, bring it right up, hold that shift key down. There we go. Same thing here. Hold that shift key. All right, good. I'm going to leave my vanishing point for now because I'm actually going to use that. Now at this point, we can zoom back out and take a look. I think I see something that's going to need to be changed here. Yes, I do. So I'm going to grab my line tool, and right here, if the end of my building ends here, remember, the front edge of the building needs to be parallel to the back edge of the building. So it ends here at this bottom corner. This bottom corner ends here. So I'm going to grab my second line thickness, starting at this intersection right here. I'm going to hold the shift key so that the bottom or the base of my building, this base is parallel to this front side and that's a trick for working with cubes if you're drawing freehand and you find that your cubes are sort of crooked looking always check to make sure that the sides are parallel front to back are parallel these sides are parallel because that's that's often a place where students will make a mistake alright again grabbing from the corner and dragging down. All right, very good. So I do need to erase this section here. So take my eraser tool, and I'm going to come in. Simply drag, drag down. Now I could put some more sidewalks. I could even put some doors and things here. I could erase this portion where the sidewalks meet something like that again it's all as, as detailed as you want to make it but you can continue on just like that and build it up until you've got all your buildings in place feel free to go in and add some color to these once you've completed it you can certainly go in and why don't I show you that go in with some different fill colors remember to left click on the color you want the left click to be and right click on the color you want let's see let's go with more of a slate so I'm gonna left click on my light blue and I'm gonna right click on this sort of slate color so if I left click in this area left click in this area and then right click on the tops it gives us a little more of a dramatic effect and I could also come back change my left click alright so you can have fun with that you can actually paint the roads I guess if you wanted to put some asphalt color in the roads okay so again play around with this technique and I hope you've learned some valuable things using this bird's eye view with one point perspective and I hope you have some fun with it feel free to upload your designs to the design solutions bulletin board or forum your teacher may show you how to do that I'm not sure but uh, feel free to upload those designs if that's something you'd like to do we'd love to see them alright thank you for watching 
At this point I'm going to let you go on your own and you can use the playback controls on the media player to help yourself through this portion of the video. I won't be talking very much. Um, I'll allow you just to kind of work along with me. You can watch and control your own playback and we'll be working on completing this design. Now before we go, we'll probably need to save our work. So go up here and click on File. And we're going to save as... I'm going to call this one... Oh, I'm going to put it in my Pictures folder. And I'm going to call it 1. Point bird's Eye. 1. Point bird's Eye. And I'm going to save that as a 24-bit bitmap. Click on Save and well done. I'll show you the rest of it as I go. Alright, at this point I'm going to draw another couple buildings in this lower right hand quadrant. So I've taken the third line thickness, I'm going to put myself a couple of buildings here, and maybe some in this uh, lower left quadrant. I'm going to select my line start setting up my guidelines bringing them back to this vanishing point again that's the key in one point perspective is to bring your orthogonals back to the vanishing point that is the diagonal lines on the edges of our planes so again bringing those guidelines back to the vanishing point. Again, I'm using the smallest line thickness because these just represent guides that eventually I'll turn into nice, thick, defining edges. All right, at this point, I'm going to add in some sidewalks to sort of give myself some boundaries for the bottom edge of my buildings, and I'll do some erasing. Hold down that shift key as you draw these lines to constrain them to those 
straight vertical and horizontal angles. Let's fix this one up. Left click and drag holding that shift key. Alright, I'm going to zoom in a couple of times here so I can really get down and erase these unnecessary lines here. Remember, position your cursor, left click on the mouse button to erase. Just proceed with caution here. I'm going to come in here now with my eraser tool and take out some of this. Yeah, I know I'm erasing some of this road, but I'm going to go back and replace that later. I just want to get rid of these little points pointing to my vanishing point. Clean those up a little bit, and then I'll clean up that intersection again. Can you actually get rid of that vanishing point at this point? Since I've already used it as much as I'm going to use for this design, I'm going to go back in and draw, redraw my street lines using that second line thickness, or that actually I use a first line thickness here. And once I connect all these lines, then I can go back and fill it in. So I'll go up and select that gray that I used, and then paint bucket, boom. All right, oh, I got to go back and change this to uh, black. So I left click on my black. Going to go back in and redefine these what are called orthogonals. Those are the diagonal lines in these perspective drawings. Gonna zoom back out. Start to come back in and define the edges. Thicken them up a little bit. Now our effect's starting to look good. It looks like a real street scene, like a bird's eye view hovering over. I'm going to come in. Remember to hold the shift key down as you draw the bases of your buildings.
All right, at this point, what I'm going to do is zoom in on this upper right-hand corner building. And I'm actually going to add a doorway. So I'm going to select my one line thickness. And I'm going to actually draw a line that's parallel to the top edge of this plane. Then hold my shift key, draw the top edge of the door. And then again, connect it back up here from the base to the corner and I'm going to create myself a little doorway and I'll color that in maybe use this uh, let's see select my paint bucket there it is All right, I'm going to go up here and select uh, left click on my light purple, right click on my dark purple, and I'm going to start to add some uh, tonal values to these buildings to increase that shading effect. Again, we're adding a light value to the top, darker value to the sides, which increases that three-dimensional form appearance. All right, I'll color this one with the same colors as I used before, the light yellow color and the light blue color. Just again, to sort of keep them uniform. And my little slate gray on the top. All right, that looks good. All right, I can show you another thing that we can do. Just as kind of a fun little tip and trick I like to pull once in a while. If I go up and I select my rectangle tool, make sure the stroke only is selected. I can come in here, grab a second line thickness, or for those in XP, change your line thickness first. Actually change it to a 3, and then select your rectangle tool. Make sure the selection is stroke only. And what we can do, we can actually add some 3 some third dimension to this. If we take this and actually, oops, control Z, I gotta select, make sure I have left click black, right click white, so that I'm still drawing in just black and white. If I left click and drag into this corner, what I can then do is take my second line thickness and come here from this corner, oops, control Z, we're going to go to the line tool now, second line thickness, and drag from this corner to this corner. And that actually makes it look as if this recedes inward, and we can paint this a little bit darker. So left click on here, maybe grab a dark value, maybe a maroon to make it look like it's inside. And then we'll take this light value of purple again dark value so left click on the light value right click on the dark value so we can go left click and right click something like that it actually makes it look as if it's receding another variation on that might be this so again black left click right white click <laughs> right click on white left click on black then again select that second line thickness or a third line thickness I'm sorry select your rectangle tool and we can sort of embed another one in here to make it look like this is almost like a tube that continues. And I would do something very similar by adding another effect, something like this. And then grabbing my line tool, making sure the second line thickness is selected and connecting this. You can play around, do all kinds of things here. But again, this is to make it look as if it's inserted into this tower. And so again, selecting colors becomes important here. So I might go with my light blue, or actually my, let's go with that maroon again. Left click on this for maroon. 
left click, right click, left click, right click. Then we can actually take this and make it into a frame of some kind by taking and maybe adding a yellow highlight. So again, just some things that you can do to play around with these, play around with different color schemes, etc. Alright, I suppose I could put a little light green out here in these sections just to soften it up a bit. Make it look like there's some grass areas there. Alright, so again, go ahead and play around. See what you can come up with. And uh, I hope you've learned some things during this video. Now again, feel free to load these or upload these to the Design Solutions Bulletin Board. Thank you and have a nice day.